Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Books with Brie. I'm Brienne, and today I'm going to try and integrate a book talk tag over to BookTube. And this specific book tag was created by Pocket Books over on TikTok. I will try and leave a link in the description below. And I really chose this one because a lot of these questions I haven't heard in a lot of the classic BookTube tags. Is what is your current read and what are your thoughts on it so far? So my current read is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. We ignore the author because she's a bigot and we don't like her. This still remains to be my favorite of the seven books. Personally, I think it might change as I get into the last few books of the series now that I'm older because when I first read it, I was a lot younger when it first came out. So personally, I'm hoping this remains my favorite because it's got a lot more exploration into the rest of the wizarding world than the first three. So those are my thoughts on my current read let me know yours because i know a lot of people loved this one but then there's a lot of people who didn't because it is vastly different from the first three the question is what is a book that is not necessarily your genre that you bought because book talk was so obsessed with it me personally, I'm going to take this question as a book the whole book community was obsessed with, and that is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. Asiman? Asiman? Not sure. Um, I have heard a lot about this in very vague terms, and nobody has actually been able to specify to me why this book is one of their favorites. And I'm not sure whether that's because it would reveal a spoiler or if they just genuinely cannot pin down what about the book makes it a favorite of theirs. But my want to read it and why I bought it was either to A, pinpoint any critiques that could be made that would be nice to be out there for other readers interested in picking it up but not sure if they would want to read it and two to see if there is actually any reason why there's no criticism because i don't think i have come across a book in a long time that had absolutely no criticism about it except for a few and then that was well deserved so i'm curious to see if this one stands by that <laughs> what is a book that you own multiple editions of because the covers were just too pretty to pass up now this one wasn't a me buy like i didn't buy these my grandma bought them for me because she is absolutely obsessed with this series and she is the cause of my obsession with this series and that would be the harry potter series but for me specifically i'm going to do the Prisoner of Azkaban because that one is my favorite cover and I only have the first three in these covers. So the original covers I have are these ones and they're paperback. The spines are always broken in, always. But the covers are nice and intact and the one that she got me, the new cover that was just too pretty for her to pass up, was part of the mural cover set where when you lay them all out across each other they form the mural and each cover relates to the book. This one does have a bent corner, but that's fine. Um, I did, I haven't cracked the spine of this one and I don't think I'll, I will. Um, if I do ever finish my collection of these covers, it will simply be for the aesthetic of the covers. <laughs> What is the book you always reread when life gets just a little too rough? And for me, that's Easy by Tamara Weber. This book follows Jacqueline as she's working her way through a breakup with her long-term boyfriend 
because he didn't want to cheat on her in college so he broke up with her to prevent a scandal later on in his political career and this follows her as she's not only working through that breakup but also working past the trauma of being attacked in the very beginning of the book and being saved by somebody she doesn't know and later finding out that that savior is also in her economics class which she shares with her ex-boyfriend. There's a lot of drama, there's a lot of personal growth, and there's a lot of talk about trauma and how it truly affects somebody and how it's different for each person. And I really appreciated that and I like the exploration of, hey, you broke up with me, but I still like you. What am I going to do about that? It's something I really appreciate. What is a book that you regret buying because now that you're looking at it, you don't think you will enjoy it? For me, that is The World of Lore, Wicked Mortals by Erin Monick. This book specifically is supposed to tell a bunch of lore stories and different stories about lore. And then I did a little research into it after I bought it because this was an impulse buy back when I was a freshman on a field trip to Barnes and Nobles back in 2017 when it was brand new. And I found out this is really more so the transcripts and the basics of the podcast lore. For me specifically, podcasts are very hard for me to get into and I'm currently in the middle of one I am absolutely loving called Morbidology and that is more so unsolved true crime and this is truly lore. So I don't think I will enjoy this. It's just gonna be a whole bunch of clashing and it's too much going on in my brain for this book. what book did you most recently buy because the cover was just absolutely gorgeous and for me this one I had heard about several times before I saw it in stores and it was a lot of mixed reviews so I wasn't really like intent on seeking it out or anything but that was Swimming Lessons Poems by Lily Reinhart and as a huge fan of Lily Reinhardt's acting and what she just stands for in her whole career, I was so happy when I saw this cover, which is absolutely gorgeous. Not only was it like split colors and like metallics for the like author's name, but the edges are also like partially looking like sprayed edges but then you like leaf through it and it's because some of the pages are genuinely entirely hot pink. It was just gorgeous and I could not resist the buy of this poetry book. What is a sequel you are hesitant to read? For me, that is Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the sequel to Shatter Me, which is part of the Shatter Me trilogy. And personally, I did not absolutely love Shatter Me. It was an okay book. There were aspects of it that I absolutely loved, and I'm hoping desperately that this book builds upon them, but I am also terrified that they won't and it'll screw it up or it will just go downhill even further than the first book did in my opinion. So this is a very, very scary read for me. <laughs> what is a middle grade series you absolutely adore and think everyone should read no matter what their age? For me, this is a duology by David Lubar. The first book is Sleeping Freshmen Never Lie. It is fairly short and followed by sophomores and other oxymorons. So the first book follows Scott as he's starting his freshman year of high school and in turn finds out that he is expecting a younger sibling. 
His way of coping with it is to start writing the manual on how to survive high school. And what I really enjoyed about this specifically was he didn't just write the manual as a manual, he was writing it to his be expected sibling as advice to them. These books I really enjoyed. Um, I read them in middle school, seventh and eighth grade. I had gotten them at my school book fair and I really enjoyed it because it touched on things a lot of books really don't when talking about your first few years of high school like grades and relationships and how absolutely insane high school relationships are because they are so weird but they also talk about different family issues and a sense of loss really and change as you're starting high school because essentially you're leaving behind who you were in middle school and a lot of times you tend to reinvent yourself when you start high school because it's a new chapter in your life and this reaches not only to personal issues and relationships and family but also to friends and there is an exploration on the difficulty of what it is to make friends and what true friends are and how you have different kinds of friends. Personally, I just loved it and it really helped me when I was in middle school because I was terrified to go into high school. So these I will always recommend for a middle grade series. What was your last four star read and why did you knock off that fifth star? For me, that was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book follows Evelyn Hugo, this major movie star, and Dominique as she is, bio she is taking notes on Evelyn's entire life story in order to create an authorized biography after Evelyn's passing. And really the whole mystery behind the story is why did Evelyn only want Dominique to write her story? And the big twist at the end was definitely not what I uh, was expecting, but my whole reason for knocking off that last star was because there were points in the book where I wanted to throw it across the room and A, I couldn't because I was reading it on my Kindle. It was an ebook. Can't do that with my Kindle. Don't want to break it. And two, they were things I shouldn't have had to be furious with her about because they were common sense things. But other than that, it is a new favorite because the plot was absolutely amazing. Each character was developed and didn't feel just thrown in there to just be thrown in there and everything served a purpose and I didn't feel bored once during the entire book. It was such an amazing read. All right, that was it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comment section below if you decide to use this tag. And please don't forget to go check out Pocket Books on TikTok. I will have the username in the description and a link if I can get one. Thank you guys so much.